I'll be talking about marine life with focus in the Philippines. As you very well know, the Philippines is surrounded by marine waters, and we are at the center of the center of marine biodiversity. Uh, the ocean is home to a plethora of living organisms, from the tiniest of the organism, which can be seen only by uh, the microscope or not seen by the naked eye. And, of course, to the largest creature known to man, uh, like, for example, uh, the whales uh, that are bigger than the elephants that you have seen. The coral reef, for example, harbors as much life as a rainforest from the minutest organism to the biggest organisms. You might be familiar with Finding them, Nemo or Finding Dory, and these were uh, films uh, taken in the coral reef ecosystem. The ocean in, in its vastness represents the greatest extremes of temperature, light, and pressure. And these are encountered by the organisms and therefore adaptation to these harsh environments create marine biodiversity and therefore gives the potential for applications like drug discovery, environmental remediation, increasing seafood supply and safety, and developing new resources for industrial processes. One giant worm, for example, which is 1.5 meters long, was found in 1977. It was growing in the Pacific Ocean, about 2,600 meters below the surface. A bacteria, bacteria symbiont was a good candidate for studies uh, for medicine. The deep sea and uh, organisms found in these deeper parts of the oceans can be potential sources of materials for the industry. For example, microbes adapted to the extreme environments can yield powerful tools for medical and other applications, like for example, the ones that are being used for DNA polymerase have been uh, used, have been taken from these uh, deep inhabiting microbes. One fish uh, you might be familiar with is a puffer fish, and it is producing tetrodotoxin. And uh, this tetrodotoxin has been used for medical purposes. And uh, it might be possible that they can be used for a specific mechanism of action that can be of medical uh, significance. And uh, therefore, I'd like to introduce to you a phenomenon which is very well known to most people as a red tide, but called technically as harmful algal blooms. And there are organisms that are causing these harmful algal blooms, and I'll be giving more examples that are commonly found in the Philippines. The Organisms that we will be showing you are the organisms that we have collected from the Philippines and we are culturing for the toxins that they produce and will be used for medical purposes in the long run. There are some uh, invertebrates which are benthic, they call this, because they are present on the surfaces of other organisms like just uh, corals and they could be rich sources for biotechnology products. Uh, one very famous uh, material that has been uh, reported from the Philippines is the conotoxin that was found from the conus uh, shells and the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has recently approved the use of this conotoxin as a medical uh, drug. Uh, some uh, soft coral contain a prostaglandin and they can be used as anti-wrinkle creams. Fluorescence in many corals may provide novel biotech light sources and some of them are now being used in the medical profession. Some uh, materials coming from seaweeds are used as anti-inflammatory and anti-viral materials and they are found in uh, the tropical areas. The seaweeds are cultured in the Philippines, for example, uh, Several species are now being cultured from uh, the wild uh, materials that have been collected in the Philippines. 
uh, some of the microalgae can produce chadaic acid, for example, that can be, again, sources of medicine for uh, some other purposes. Some nutritional requirements can be addressed by the algae, also from the marine habitat, because they produce the so-called PUFA or uh, PUFA to, to the common man. The other uses of uh, organisms coming from uh, the marine habitat is the corals, for example, and they used as artificial moons already. Other industrial applications are uh, those coming from jellyfish, uh, like for example, the fluorescent compounds from the jellyfish, novel glues from mussels. Uh, the mussels are not only edible, but they produce gl glues that can be used for industrial uh, purposes. Natural products that can be effective as anti-cancers are also collected and identified from acidians or sea squirts. Also, aquaculture techniques have been enhanced to produce more materials from uh, other uh, organisms like invertebrates and seaweeds, as I have pointed out earlier. And now let's talk about seaweed farming. Uh, I think uh, many of you are familiar with seaweeds from the market and they are eaten as salad. But seaweed farming, meaning those that are farmed already because of their high economic value, is being done almost in the entire Philippines in many tropical areas in Southeast Asia, in uh, also in uh, South American countries, and even in uh, Africa. Like for example, the Capophycus alvarezi, I'll be showing you the organism later, is being farmed uh, worldwide and I think the most economically important seaweed of today. They are uh, found in ice creams as mixtures, uh, binders for many uh, materials, even for some of the beers that you need to take uh, well, regularly. And some other uh, pastries would need seaweed, for, for example. In the Philippines, uh, many of these uh, f seaweeds are farmed in uh, the Visayas and in Mindanao as well as in many areas in Luzon. Now the value has been increasing because of some problems relating to changes in climate that are affecting the seaweeds uh, that are being farmed. Uh, and so therefore seaweed farming uh, was based on, uh, on an organism collected from the Philippines, developed as a crop and for many decades now, giving uh, the industry and the fishermen and some families income uh, which cannot be uh, uh, estimated uh, at this point. It could be billions of uh, dollars, in, in fact. Now, let's proceed with the so-called harmful algal blooms, which uh, this time negatively affect the economy as as pointed out earlier, but also would affect also the health, for example, if not managed well. I mentioned a while ago that uh, marine life would give food security and food safety. In fact, the Filipinos would be, uh, per I mean, not permanently, uh, are basically uh, dependent on the sea for protein source, meaning the fish. And so therefore, uh, this dependence, dependence on fish would uh, be uh, addressed uh, more uh, sustainably if we have uh, fish uh, from the marine environment uh, as, as needed by the Filipinos. Now, uh, for many years now, uh, fish production in the Philippines as well as in other countries in, uh, around the world are dependent in aquaculture, not from the natural harvest. So therefore, from cut, capture of fishery, we call it, uh, there is less production and from aquaculture, there is more production. But along with this increase in aquaculture are problems that are uh, facing uh, our marine uh, seafood uh, sources. And so therefore, one of the major problems of this uh, seafood uh, industry is the so-called red tide 
or harmful algal blooms. Now, uh, I, uh, maybe you have not seen this red tide, as many as red as this in the Philippines, but uh, I've seen them in many areas. This picture is from uh, my friend, uh, an Australian scientist, and you can see how red the ocean was during that phenomenon. And uh, actually, this is caused by a microorganism, uh, microalgae, that has uh, increased in density. And uh, this increase in density could uh, cause harm depending on the organisms that are in bloom. There are many causes of red tides or harmful algal blooms. I'd like to mention, mention some anthropogenic factors, like for example, inputs from the uh, land, like fertilizers and even uh, too, too much feeds being inputted into the water for the aquaculture of fish. There is that harmful algal bloom that is caused bottom from bottom up and the, the, those that are caused at, from top to bottom. So uh, this would uh, change the food chain and therefore would cause the increase in the density of your microorganism that can cause your harmful algal blooms. Now, uh, there is a prediction that with the increase in climate change, there will be changes in the, in the micro phytoplankton that is present in the ocean and so therefore the biodiversity would be changed and therefore would cause more problems in terms of harmful algal blooms. Uh, even ships can carry uh, harmful microorganisms or harmful phytoplankton from one area to the other. That's the reason why the International Maritime Organization has imposed uh, a management scheme that would check this deballasting and ballasting of ships to avoid the transfer of these invasive organisms. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to uh, give a complex uh, picture of harmful algal blooms, but to summarize, inputs from the land and transfer from one side to the other can cause uh, harmful algal blooms and therefore could impact the industry and as well as cause uh, health problems like poisonings of human beings. Now these are the organisms that we have now uh, cultured, isolated from the Philippines from as many as 10 or more uh, areas in the Philippines and this is a primary cause of paralytic shellfish poisoning in the country and uh, the main cause also for paralytic shellfish poisoning in the, re the, in the tropical world. And uh, we have cultured this and we have isolated the so-called pyroneosacs, which are now, we are now developing for some medical purposes together with some people from the College of Medicine of UP and probably with some collaborations from universities abroad. Now, uh, this is just to show you the extent of uh, the damage, not really the economic as well as the health impacts of these organisms throughout Southeast Asia. This would show you the, the occurrence of the organisms in the area. Now, uh, we, at the UNESCO, we came up with this uh, particular poster to prevent panic of uh, people when there is a uh, a bloom of a certain organism because it is only the shellfish which is affected but the other seafood are not affected and therefore this would prevent uh, the so-called uh, uh, halo effect uh, and so therefore would prevent people from uh, buying the other seafood uh, uh, which is a negative uh, eff would have negative effect on the industry. Now, actually, the intoxication of uh, the organism is through the shellfish. The organism is uh, uh, collected by the shellfish in the marine habitat, and therefore, they are concentrated on the shellfish. And so, therefore, when the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources puts up a ban, actually, the organism has accumulated, the shellfish has accumulated the organisms in their body and therefore you, the human beings are prevented from taking this. Based on the studies that we have, we already have predictions on when they would occur and mostly they occur 
or they happen during the southwest monsoon, which is the period now. And so therefore, if you look into the newspaper, there are a lot of bonds in the country for shellfish collection and uh, marketing. Okay, so many areas in the country are affected and preventive uh, management has been in place. Now, uh, I'd like to show you a very nice uh, picture of what uh, we have found out in terms of the movement of some harmful organism from one country to the other using current systems. For example, uh, there was this fish kill in Palawan uh, some years ago, and the mayor of Palawan called us to, to see what was happening uh, about the fish kill. And uh, this is another type of uh, an organism that has proliferated, and it is the fish which is affected and not the shellfish. So the fish died uh, when they consumed this uh, particular organism. So the water was red. Uh, the blue waters of Palawan turned red and so we went there to co collect the materials and this would show you the satellite images of how the red tide uh, moved from the uh, southern part of Palawan to the northern part of Palawan but actually the red tide originated from Malaysia which is uh, the, the one nearer uh, Palawan. Okay, so these are the images, and it would show you that the red tide moved from Malaysia, Sabah, going up to Palawan, and it involved several kilometers of water moving, following the current of the West Philippine Sea, or the South China Sea to some, uh, following the current system that time, moving from south to north, and affecting the waters, meaning... Uh, uh, causing fish kill from that area to the other. So it uh, was from uh, the uh, from uh, Palawan, but actually coming from uh, the northern side of Malaysia. The organism is Coclodinium, uh, and uh, the blooms have been recorded also in other parts of Asia. So like for example in Korea and Japan, and of course in Brunei, Malaysia, and the Philippines. And this is the subject of a collaboration between all these countries to see the movement of the organism, whether also if they are really diverse or they are of the same organisms. And so therefore, uh, uh, this would be helpful in the management of this particular organism. Harmful algal blooms do not only affect a human beings through the food chain, but also affect birds and marine mammals. There have been reports of uh, some marine mammals, uh, like for example, uh, the manatees that died in Florida in 1996, and also lately in Chile, there was a lot of uh, death uh, that was been caused by harmful algal blooms. And so therefore, uh, the marine habitat can be affected uh, completely by these uh, harmful algal blooms, causing uh, harm through the food chain and eventually reaching human beings. So the effect could be economic or even uh, public health affected by these harmful al algal blooms. In closing, I'd like to say that the marine habitat is very rich in life. Biodiversity is very rich, especially in the Philippines, which is the center of the center of marine biodiversity. But there is a time for some problems. For example, when man would interfere with this uh, biodiversity and cause negative impacts in the most commonly uh, recorded uh, events uh, of late, especially during the last decade, is the so-called harmful algal bloom, meaning affecting the lowest of the food chain and going through the food chain going up and affecting human beings and other marine life uh, as well. My message here is this. We should love our marine environment. It is the heaven of our marine life. And especially the Philippines, which is the center of the center of marine biodiversity. It is our life, especially because the Philippines is made up of 70% 
water, meaning marine waters, and only 30% land.